The following is an audio excerpt from Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, by John Abdo. From that day onward, Median overseers ranked subordinate as Persian militiamen took control of Diotimos and the fighting contests. Recognizing him as a money maker, they consistently had Diotimos fight slaves and non-citizens from other states. All of his opponents originated from varying lifestyles. He fought lumberjacks and quarrymen, carpenters and ironsmiths, stonemasons and seamen, hunters and herdsmen, bakers and farmers. All combatants proclaimed to own the superior fighting style, each one asserting that it was his technique which reigned supreme. As with the irregular strategies of the bulls he baited, each man Diotimos fought possessed his own unique psychological characteristics, physical attributes, levels of attrition, technical adroitness, and tolerances to pain. The more Diotimos fought, the more he learned, eventually mixing various martial styles into a fluid athletic fighting art form unique to himself. Due to his slave status, however, Diotimos was never permitted to compete in sanctioned Panhellenic contests. Nonetheless, fighting in contests daily, up to 10 matches in one day, all of which he emerged from victorious, the maturing teen earned the reputation of being the toughest slave fighter alive. And the more he was punched, kicked, slammed, and choked, the stronger, tougher, and more dexterous Diotimos body adapted to the violent attacks as had the solo olive tree from the extreme forces that consistently smashed against its branches, limbs, and trunk. If you are enjoying this content, please like, follow, share, and subscribe, and I'll continue to bring you more fascinating information on Milo of Croton and other great mythological and mortal figures from antiquity. I'm John Abdo, thanking you for watching. Stay strong and healthy, and perhaps one day, thousands of years from now, people then will be remembering your name as well.